Welcome to the Photoshop training channel. Have you guys been paying attention to the craziness that's going on right now? You know what I'm talking about. The zombie apocalypse? You've never heard about it? It's all over the news. Here, let me show you. A college student tells police he killed a housemate and then ate part of the victim's heart and brain. Miami police say one homeless man attacked another on a busy highway in broad daylight and chewed the guy's face off. Tonight, an international manhunt for a porn star accused of sending body parts to members of government. What the hell is going on here? The zombie apocalypse. The possibility of a zombie apocalypse. O apocalipsis de los zombies. So there you have it, folks. The zombies are here, and they're even speaking Spanish. So, to help you get ready for the imminent end of the world, I figured I would teach you how to turn someone into a zombie using non-destructive techniques in Photoshop CS6. I hear this is a little bit less painful than eating someone's brains out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this beautiful young lady and turn her into a brain-eating creature from hell. So, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do to turn this girl into a zombie is crop out the background. I've already gone ahead and deleted the background, so if your image still has a background, go ahead and remove the background and then follow the steps I'm about to show you. So once you do that, the next step is fix her skin tone. She's got beautiful skin and I don't think zombies have great skin, so we're going to change her skin tone just a little bit. To do that, I'm going to click on the layer style icon and select hue and saturation on the properties panel. Oh, and by the way, if your properties panel is not showing, make sure that it's on. You can click on Window and click on Properties. On the Properties panel, I'm going to desaturate the image just a little bit and change my hue over to the right just to add some green to it. And that looks 20. 20 looks like it's going to work for this case and I think I desaturated her just a little too much. I'm just going to bring that over to about negative 40. I'm not going to need the layer mask on this particular layer style, so I'm just going to delete it. And this window that came up, I'm just going to click on delete. And I'm going to hover in between the two layers, hold the Alt key on the PC, Command on the Mac, and click when I see that down pointing arrow to create a clipping mask. And this is going to work sort of like a mask so that anything that's on this layer is only going to show on the active pixels of the layer below it. So any effects that I apply to this image would only apply to the layer of the girl. So I'm just going to press Control c to undo that. Next, I'm going to create another layer style. This time I'm going to use Levels. And I'll do the same thing, delete the layer mask. Yes, I want to delete it since I don't need it. And I'll click in between the layers. And by the way, if you leave those layer masks, it won't affect anything. I just think they're clutter and, I don't know, they just kind of bother me. But if you leave them, nothing's going to happen. Everything's going to work out fine. The next thing we're going to do is, on the properties, we're going to select the mid-tone here and bring that over to the right just a little bit to darken up the image. In this case, 56 works great for my image. And you know what? She's still looking very healthy. And I think we need to increase the hue and saturation just a little bit. So I'm going to desaturate just a little bit more, and I'm going to add a little more of that hue to make her look a little greener. 46 is actually working pretty good. Next, I'm going to bring up an image of the skull. Click on the skull, click on Open, and it's going to open it up in a new tab, but I want it in that same composition that I was working on, so I'm just going to click on the tab, drag down, make sure my Move tool is selected, click on the image, drag it over onto my composition, and let it go. I'm going to close this tab since we don't need it. And it automatically created a clipping mask for me, and that's great. I want the layer of the skull to be just above the layer of my model here. And notice that it turned it green because it's taking the hue saturation from the layer styles above it, which is OK. I'm going to click and drag that over to her head. I'm going to try to match it to her actual head, so I'm going to press Control T to bring up the distortion tools, hold Shift and click on one of these little transformation handles to keep it constrained, and I made it too small. Let me make that a little bit bigger. I'm going to bring the opacity down so I can see the background a little bit better, and I realize that my skull is facing to the right, but my model's facing to the left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the picture of the skull horizontally. To do that, you click on Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontal, 
and now they're facing the same way I just gotta rotate that just a little bit and this is fitting pretty nicely now your image might not fit as good so what you would need to do is right click on the image when you are in the free transform tools and click on warp and you can click on the little handles here to better match your skull to your model but this this is this is already working good for me I don't really need to do this but I wanted to show you this little trick so you could fit your model just a little bit better and actually now that I'm playing with it I, I guess I did need it a little bit and there you go that's fine press enter on the PC or return to the Mac to accept those changes the next thing you need to do is bring this back, the opacity back up to 100%. Add a new layer mask by clicking the layer mask icon. Make sure your foreground is selected to black and click Alt Backspace on the PC to fill that layer with black and get rid of that skull. And the reason we did that was so we can just bring in this section of the skull here. Maybe she got shot or something happened to her face where her skin and eye fell out and you can see the skull. So we're going to bring that back by clicking on the brush tool, making sure our foreground select to white, and this brush is a little too big. I'm going to use the bracket keys on my keyboard to make that smaller, and since I'm painting it white and my layer mask is selected, it's bringing back that skull. So I'm just going to draw that in, and if you accidentally do something like that where you don't want to get rid of her lips, just change the color back to black and get rid of that. So I'm just gonna carefully bring everything back that I want and that's looking pretty good. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add some flesh wounds and we're gonna really mess up our skin. To do that we're gonna add a new image which is this picture of this rusty metal texture thing I'm just going to click and drag that tab down, make sure my move tool is selected, and move that into my composition. I'm going to close this, and I'm just going to click and drag this layer all the way to the top. I'm going to set my blending mode to multiply. I'm going to press Ctrl T to transform that image. I'm going to click on the little handles on the top left to decrease the size. I'm holding Shift to constrain the image. If I don't hold Shift, this is what happens. You can move the image anywhere you can distort the image and you might pixelate it for some things that's exactly what you want to do but not for this case so I'm just gonna hold shift to constrain it and I'm gonna place this damaged area over her eye like I said maybe something shot her in the face or something exploded on her face just trying to get it right and yeah something like that I think works yeah I think this and there you go, I think that looks good. So I'm just going to press enter once I'm done. But now we have this hard edge around our image. Oh, and by the way, since it's a clipping mask, notice that we don't have to worry about our texture bleeding out of her body. It just applies the texture right to her, which is why you have to crop out your image and just clip the wing clipping mask, since they do have to work for you. Next, you have to create a new layer mask to erase these hard edges. So I'm going to click on the layer mask icon. Make sure my foreground selected to black. Click on the brush tool and brush away some of those hard edges. And by the way, I have a soft brush tool, so if you don't, make sure that you do. Otherwise, you'll just be creating more hard edges in different areas. And that works fine for me. I'm going to duplicate this layer and move it to the right just to kind of add some more damage to your face on the other side and I kinda like this weird texture here so maybe I don't know maybe she had herpes when she was alive and they're not healing anymore now I'm gonna click on the brush tool to kinda get rid of those hard edges and oh I made a mistake I'm clicking on the layer itself not the layer mask I'm gonna press control Z to undo that and click on the layer mask so I can come and delete the hard edges It's okay if it kind of bleeds into the hair. Maybe she got some blood splattered on her hair and stuff like that. So that that looks good. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create one more layer and set my brush to black. And I'm going to color in her shirt with black. And you'll see why in a moment. 
I'll do this really quick. I don't have to be perfect. You might want to be perfect since your particular image calls for it, but in my case, it's really not that big of a deal. I'm also just showing you here in a tutorial. If I was doing this in real life, I would definitely take my time, but for the sake of time, I will go really fast here. Okay, once you draw the shirt in, make sure that it's set to a clipping mask as well, and set this to color. And we'll leave that there for now. We're going to click on the layer right below it, the rust skin that's applying to the right side of our face. We're going to duplicate that, bring that to the very top, and notice that we lost the clipping mask on the previous layer. Well, that's okay. We can bring that back by holding Alt on the PC, Option on the Mac, bringing those back. On this very top layer, the duplicate layer of the right side of her face, we're going to drag that over to her left hand. We're going to delete the layer mask since we don't need that particular mask, but we do need a mask, so we're going to make a new one. What I'm going to do now is I, I'm going to use a texture for the shirt, but I don't want to use the same texture as her hands. So we have to mask everything out that's part of her shirt, but we already have this layer that we created earlier so we're gonna use that to mask her hands so I'm gonna I'm gonna come over to the shirt layer I created I'm gonna press control on the PC and notice that my hand has a little marquee square thing around it well that's letting us know that if I click it's gonna create a selection out of those pixels and then I can come up to the layer mask right above it and fill it with black and it gets rid of that texture on the shirt which is exactly what I wanted I'm gonna duplicate the layer one more time and this time I'm going to remove the little chain link here so I can click on the layer and move my layer but keeping the mask intact so I can apply this texture to the right hand her left hand our right once I do that I'm going to click on the layer mask again because there's a hard edge there so I'm going to get rid of that by selecting black selecting a brush and removing the hard edge. Okay, that works pretty good. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to open up that same rust image that we used earlier and these are going to be the stains for her shirt as well. So I'm just going to resize that a little bit and kind of place it. I'm trying to get a good spot here. Yeah, I think I think this will work. If it doesn't, we can always move it. I'm going to set this layer to soft light and I'm going to come back and click on the shirt layer we created earlier control click to load the selection I'm going to go back up to that layer we created for the shirt stains then I'm going to click on the layer mask icon to add a layer mask and our shirt stains are created but you know what they're still looking a little dull I want to kind of darken those up a little bit so I'm going to bring that layer down just above that black layer so to keep those close and I'm also going to click on the layer mask for that stained shirt layer then I'm going to create a new adjustment layer and I'm going to use curves and I'm going to bring that down to create more contrast so it looks sturdier and more rusty more more like dried up blood so that's looking pretty good and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the very top layer here for her right hand. I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to delete the layer mask. And yes, I want to delete it. I'm going to bring that over to her chest. And that looks pretty good. And once again, I'm going to load that shirt layer we created earlier. Apply a layer mask. And this time it deleted what we wanted to keep. and kept what we wanted to delete. Well that's pretty easy to fix. On that layer mask, make sure you have the layer mask selected and press control and the letter I on the keyboard to invert that mask and select your brush tool to get rid of any extra texture or pixels that we don't want. So that, that looks pretty good. Okay, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to mess up her teeth a little bit. Her teeth are way too white and too pretty for a zombie's teeth. I mean, she's eating brains and arms and legs and God knows what else. So we need to jack those things up just a little bit. So I'm going to um, open up the skull image once again. I'm going to drag it into my composition. I don't want to save it. And press Control-T 
to kind of slice that up and once again I'm gonna transform this horizontally and I kinda wanna get her teeth right so it's gonna place that where her teeth are and that works great I'm gonna create a new layer mask and I'm gonna fill it with black and I'm just gonna bring her teeth back there you go and I'm gonna select my brush tool again set it to black and just I wanna keep these four teeth that's about it so I'm gonna delete everything else and I know it's, it's not looking perfect right now but that's okay we're gonna fix that in a moment so now that I have these four teeth selected I'm gonna move them up just a little bit and maybe and zoom out and that's looking pretty okay I'm gonna select my move tool again and I'm just gonna make them just a little bit wider so they cover more over actual face and that that's looking pretty good now and I think I'm gonna kinda shape her teeth just a little bit make them I don't know just a little a little pointier I don't know, I guess it looks scarier if they're pointy. There you go. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Her teeth are just a little too bright, so I'm going to select the burn tool, and I'm just going to kind of darken those up just a little bit. And I think that looks okay. Okay, that's her zombie. The only thing we have left is to add her into a background just to kind of finish the whole effect here. And I don't know about you guys, but it seems like zombies are always coming out of the woods. No matter where the outbreak starts, it always seems that the zombies end up in the woods. It's always a misty, foggy forest. So why don't we add her into a forest? I have one image here of a forest that I'm going to drag into her composition. And I don't want this to be part of the clipping mask, so I'm just going to drag this all the way to the bottom and I'm gonna place that in that looks okay and we're gonna add some mist or some fog with this smoke here I'm gonna drag that in there as well I'm gonna press control T or option T in the Mac to transform it I want this to be very very short but very wide so I think the width is pretty good just as is and the height is pretty good as well I think that'll work then I'm going to click on Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and set it to about 6.1, 6.0 works fine for my case. And click on the Layer Styles, set it to Screen, duplicate that layer, move it up just a little bit, up and to the right, and duplicate it again, move it up and to the left and I'm gonna select the top two layers of fog and I'm gonna bring the opacity down of these guys to about 35 40 percent should do the trick and on the bottom one I'll leave it at about 77 percent that looks good and everything's looking great and the only thing is this is daylight and usually zombies come out at night so let's, let's darken this up just a little bit so I'm gonna click on the very top layer then click on the layer styles icon and select curves. So I'm just going to click right in the middle of this line here and then just drag it down and darken it up. And that looks good in my case. For your image you might have to do something a little different but in most cases this will work. I'm going to add one more layer and I'm going to create a vignette around everything just to kind of darken it up. So I'm going to select a soft brush and increase the size till about I don't know 267 seems to work fine just kind of color around the edges to darken everything up and that's pretty much it we created our zombie and now we're ready for the zombie apocalypse and we did it all without hurting the original image so that's the original image and this is the image with all the different layers layer styles and different options that we added to it so that's the way to go a non-destructive Photoshop that is all for today ladies and gentlemen if you like this video click on the like button if you really like this video, add it to your favorites. Also, share it on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever you like to share your stuff. If you have any comments or questions about this video, leave them in the comment section below. And do not forget to subscribe to the Photoshop training channel for more awesome tutorials. And of course, thank you for watching.